Hi, this is Jason Bloomberg, Managing Director of Intellix, and I'm here with Ponipa, a head of Brigade Plus. So welcome, Ponipa, Thank and you. Thanks, for, thanks for joining me. Thank you. So why don't you tell us a bit, just give us an overall picture of what uh, Brigade Plus is and uh, sort of the overall story of the company. Sure. Um, to tell you a bit about Brigade Plus, I first need to tell you about the Brigade Group, okay. which is the parent organization. Um, the Brigade Group is one of India's largest real estate developers. We are a 37-year-old company. We are a publicly traded company. And a majority of our value creation is in the residential, commercial, and retail mm -hmm. asset space, right? Um, so uh, we've actually been um, one of those companies that uh, has been focused on technology for uh, quite some time. In fact, uh, uh, one of the first implementations of SAP in the real estate space was in India was uh, in our organization. Mm -hmm. um, Brigade Plus is the value added services arm for Brigade and our thought process was really to kind of figure out in the entire life cycle of the purchase journey with mm -hmm. uh, Brigade for our customers. Uh, we wanted to see where we could add a little more value and where the customer could benefit from their association with us. So we started off uh, with what I would consider uh, low-hanging fruit in this uh, space. We build the home, they buy the home, we build the home. Uh, but of course, uh, whether someone needs to rent out the home, whether someone needs to actually live uh, in that space, they probably need to do their interiors. Mm -hmm. So interiors was the first uh, uh, you know, business that we kind of uh, went after. And uh, we've been doing that for about three years now. And uh, under the value added uh, arm, again, we also help our customers uh, resell the property should they wish to do that. And we also help them let it out and rent it out uh, should they uh, wish to do that. So yeah, that's uh, typically what uh, we've been doing right now. There is a third arm that handles software development. And the thought process behind developing software in-house is to kind of enhance the seamless living experience we want our customers to have after they move into our properties. So tell us a bit about how Brigade Plus got into Zoho. What was your first Zoho app and how did you get started? I got started by searching on Google and really looking for a CRM software. I went to Google, searched for mm -hmm. uh, CRM solutions and I got Zoho. We knew CRM was the starting point for us, right? Um, mm -hmm. There's a bunch of things you need to do downline, but uh, I think for any new organization, uh, lead management is probably the most crucial part because once the sales start coming in, then, you know, like a typical startup, that's when you figure out uh, the supply chain, uh, you know, down the line. Uh, so we went and uh, subscribed to uh, Zoho CRM after considering a bunch of other options. I've previously had experience in implementation of uh, SAP uh, C4C Hybris uh, uh, Salesforce uh, within the organization. So those are tools we're already familiar with. And um, I looked at uh, Zoho CRM and uh, found a few things that I believed were fairly unique, uh, especially with regard to the workflow management that one could program uh, into it. So I was quite uh, interested and intrigued by the lead management and the lead nurturing portion of the uh, journey that we could build onto the system. So uh, that's kind of why we chose CRM. But moving from there, I think for us it's been a... Uh, it's been a journey where we have now expanded. We use about nine or ten Zoho products, and all of them, you know, talk to each other. They're integrated with each other to kind of fulfill the entire supply chain journey uh, for our customer. And uh, really, the thought process over there now, anyway, for us is um, before we look for a tech solution, I usually call my Zoho rep and ask, "Hey, do you have a solution for this?" Right? If they do, it's the easiest thing in the world to get it to work with mm -hmm. everything else. So that's kind of how we've been uh, approaching it. So you said that you had some experience in your organization with Salesforce, but you went with uh, Zoho CRM anyway. Yeah. So what was the thought process there? Why did, why did, what, how was Zoho able to displace, you know, the, the well-known uh, CRM leader yeah. in this space? Yeah. So um, I think one of the biggest considerations for me, having worked with uh, Salesforce earlier, was the level of customization that I wanted to achieve was a little difficult mm -hmm. to do in Salesforce. Uh, from at least in our exploratory stage, what we discovered about Zoho CRM is that the amount of customizations that I could do was significantly better and suited our use case a lot better. 
Uh, but not just that. I think the cost was also a big factor. I think uh, Zoho came at a fraction of the cost for us. And uh, that was a big motivator because uh, this was also a business we see growing quite rapidly and consuming uh, a lot of uh, licenses. When we started off, uh, it was me, one member, right? Mm. Uh, we are about 70 plus right now. And in the next year, we're expecting to cross about 200, right? So when we talk about scale and scalability, I think cost really kicks in and that, that actually mm. uh, compounds multifold. So we were cautious about making that decision based on cost. But apart from that, we also found that like for like, we got equal, if not more value for money. Uh, because of the features and because of the product itself. So I'd like to drill down a little more on the customization because you know Salesforce will say that you can customize that product as well. Yeah. So what what did you actually do as an organization to customize uh, the Zoho CRM and you know what tools or, or languages or you know how, how did you go about the customization? All right. So on the customization front, I think the first thing that I mean that really comes to mind is. With Salesforce, we actually needed a lot of external support to get that customization done. Most of the customization that we do within Zoho, we do ourselves, right? We have team members who are working on Sandbox and are able to do it because effectively, CRM specifically is a no-code platform, right? I can achieve most of what I want to do in terms of workflows and customizations simply by dragging and dropping and writing very simple uh, blueprints or very simple uh, rules, right? So uh, I think that was one distinguishing factor for us uh, from our experience in Salesforce, which is uh, from 2012 uh, onwards. But uh, secondly, and uh, more importantly, with regard to the workflows themselves, uh, when, when we spoke to the teams at uh, uh, Zoho, I think one of the things that became very uh, clear is that we would be able to match and map the customer lifecycle journey end to end with the suite of products that they have, right? So we knew when we got into Zoho CRM that at some point in time, the entire journey, including the accounting bit, including the survey bit, calculation of NPS, calculation of CSAT, uh, project management, uh, project uh, uh, issue red redressals, Zoho Desk, right? We knew all of these things could be plugged in eventually when we needed it. So we think of it like Lego, right? We bought a basic set and we started setting that up, knowing full well that should we need any other ancillary services, we could always plug them in. So I think that was one of the uh, key uh, deciding factors for us. You just like Lego, you start with the basic set and before long you're building the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. So it's just, it's just that's the way that. it works. So, so the Zoho applications are all already come pre-integrated. That's one of the be benefits of Zoho. Absolutely. Uh, but you also mentioned SAP and, and other applications. So are you integrating Zoho apps with other apps that aren't Zoho apps? And it, what sort of, what is the integration story at uh, Absolutely. So um, the short answer is yes, we are integrating with uh, multiple uh, you know, uh, third party applications. SAP is just one of them. Um, we also integrate with uh, a provider, a payment gateway called Razorpay, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because all of our transactions with customers are digital. So uh, they receive a link and make a payment online either through UPI, which is a payment format that's available in India, or they use net banking uh, mm -hmm. for it, as the case may be. Uh, so that, that's one use case where we are actually integrating with a third party. Another place, of course, is uh, with the SAP database because um, ultimately, for me, being a value-added services arm for the Brigade Group, um, I focus on customers that the parent company has already won, mm -hmm. right? And uh, downstream, I figure out how I want to use that. So for me, every customer of Brigade is a potential customer for Brigade Plus. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of that information, whether it's regard uh, regarding their contact information that uh, we may need to make uh, calls or emails, whether it is the transactional information that I need comes in from the system. The third and fourth integrations that I could possibly talk about is going to be our telephony services, because uh, we've integrated our telephony services to allow customers to have a single number to call to be connected to any of the people that they was speaking to, whether it's a salesperson, whether it's somebody in design, whether it's a CRM representative. Uh, so we use those integration services as well. And thirdly, we integrate with O365 for our email, uh, you know, clients. So um, 
Many organizations that have SAP think of SAP as sort of the center of gravity, right? Yep. They build their whole business around ERP and yep. how ERP sort of drives the business. Is that still the case or uh, has the center of gravity for at least for Brigade Plus shifted to the Zoho CRM product? Because CRM can be the center of gravity for a business when you're customer focused, right? Yep. It should be. Um, not easy though, uh, especially with uh, SAP still being, as a public limited company, all of our reporting still needs to happen through SAP mm -hmm, because right. there are auditory requirements that are there. It's also that our teams are used to probably consuming data from SAP. Our auditors are used to consuming data from SAP. So um, that center of gravity still remains the ERP system. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're actually finding a bit of, uh, we're making some headway over there right now because we're now able to kind of at least convince internal teams and auditors that, hey, I want all of this transactional information is available on Zoho. I'm going to have it on books, and books is equally good, if not better, an accounting tool or uh, you know, uh, record keeping mechanism. So we are actually now working towards uh, a system where we'll be able to integrate books directly with SAP and push all of that information directly. So there are no mm. auditory requirements. Your, your challenge becomes when you're downloading something into an Excel and then uploading it. So we want to just create that link so there are no audit related challenges. And as soon as we uh, you know, reach that, I think we'll be able to actually think of CRM as the center of gravity, at least within the Brigade Plus environment. So there's a question I have to ask, you know, since it's 2024, and that is what is your AI story and how does how are you incorporating AI into your Zoho uh, efforts? Yeah, so AI is a relatively new uh, project for us mm -hmm. internally anyway. Uh, I know there's a lot that's been spoken about for the last one and a half, two odd years, but it's really blown up. Um, we're using AI for a couple of things. Uh, first, and I think the most uh, prevalent use case uh, within our organization is to get sentiment analysis of emails. Uh, and uh, to reply to those emails. So we have integrated uh, chat GPT with Zoho Desk, and that actually allows our uh, team members uh, to save a lot of time by not going through pages of emails, but clicking a button, waiting a few seconds, and getting just the gist of the entire story and the uh, mm -hmm. sentiment of the customer, right? So I think that that is really helpful, and it, it's pretty good because, you know, the tool actually throws out all of the relevant dates that you have, the interactions, et cetera. Um, so that, that's pretty good. But we also use the same tool in just another tab to actually formulate a response to the customer. So if, if I just click on a button, the suggested response from uh, uh, you know, uh, ChatGPT comes in. And then the team looks at it, analyzes it, uses the relevant portions in their emails and sends it across. We found that one, uh, the, the teams use it quite a bit and they're happy with it because it actually saves a lot of time of just typing, if nothing else, right? And uh, they're also able to generate more cohesive responses in terms of the structure of the language. And that is important given the context that in India and for my team, for a majority of my team members, English is not their first language, oh, yeah. <laughs> right? And uh, however, English is the language of business and language of communication with our customers. So it does make their lives a lot easier. And those are two use cases where I think my users are directly using inputs from AI to service our customers. Apart from that, we also use AI in the analytics portion of it. So analytics for trend analysis and to be able to kind of predict uh, when we expect a certain deal to close, what the average deal closure times has been, right? So uh, that's also something we're finding uh, good value in. Very good. So you described a few of the benefits of the AI part of the story, but tell us a bit more broadly about the overall benefits your organization has gotten from Zoho. Oh, Zoho. Um, I think um, my biggest benefit really that we've seen uh, after implementing Zoho is that um, efficiency of my team members is significantly higher than the industry average in, uh, let's say, the interior space, I want to say. Um, I know for a fact that our salespeople outsell any other competitor we have. That's because you have right? good salespeople, right? Also, <laughs> but not just, right? Okay. Not just. I mean, you're absolutely right. I'd like to believe we have a phenomenal sales team. Uh, but it's also the usage of the tools that they have to make them more 
mm -hmm. efficient, right? So that that's something that uh, I really think we're doing well. I also know that our design teams d churn out more design per designer than our closest competitor, right? So productivity benefits. Yes, so it's definitely productivity benefits. But uh, also apart from that, I think the user journey and the user experience that uh, our customers get is something that I think is our biggest win, mm -hmm. right? So um, it takes away the human dependency on a lot of process-driven interactions that need to happen with a customer. For example, if you have purchased a product from us and you have gone ahead and you know, this will all sound like, hey, this is so obvious, right? And, and there are people out there, Amazon's doing it, right? And uh, there are high-tech companies that are doing it. Uh, what, what we have to keep in mind is we are not a tech company. We are a brick and mortar real estate company. Mm -hmm. And adoption in of tech in real estate, at least in India, is extremely low, right? So actually, it's 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 quite in in the traditional sense now not groundbreaking. But if you look at it from an industry perspective, the fact that when a customer makes a payment, they immediately get an email acknowledging that the payment has been made, saying that so and so is the designer that has been assigned to you. The designer will call you in forty eight hours. The task being set for the designer automatically the knowledge transfer being done automatically between two modules, the reminder going to the designer saying that, hey, read this file so you have the knowledge transfer, call this customer on such and such time, pre-schedule the call, automating the emails that goes out, automating the calls that go out, significantly improves the customer's experience and therefore their expectation of us. Because depending on how you talk to a customer, uh, and this could vary, right? You and 20 other salespeople all have their style and uh, method of uh, interacting with customers. But as a brand, we'd like to maintain some level of, I would say, um, uniformity in the language that we use, in the way we'd like to communicate. And again, coming back to the fact, some of these things uh, I know uh, out here, at least in the US, you may take for granted. But given that, uh, again, English is not the first language for a lot of the team members, I, I think it is important to give them the additional help that could actually enhance the customer experience. Very good, so final question, what's, what's next? What is your future uh, with the Zoho product line? Um, the way we've approached it so far, like I think I touched upon it at the beginning of our interview. Now, whenever I need a tech solution, I usually call my Zoho rep and say, hey, do you have a solution for this? And it's when they say, no, we don't have it, is when I start looking outside. But I think uh, brass tacks, the way we'd like to look at it is uh, we'd want our end-to-end -end journey, including our financial transactions and settlements to happen on Zoho, because I think there is a huge opportunity that uh, you know we are not uh, capitalizing on right now by leaving that accounting part out of the equation. And I feel like when we bring that in, the end-to-end -end customer journey is going to be significantly uh, more enriched and uh, therefore lead to better future conversions for me and better customer experience and better brand equity for us. Well, thank you very much. That's all the time we have. So right. we've been speaking with Panapa from uh, Brigade Plus. This is Jason Bloomberg with Intellix. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you.